Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to teach you about Frost Death Knight talents and playstyle for BFA. Frost relies on heavy burst windows to quickly burst their target down and has a different playstyle than Unholy. In this video, I'm going to cover talent choices, when to use those talents, as the right traits and gearing, so you can keep pressure for your team with the right talent choices. Before we get into this video, it's important to note that this information has been gathered from the beta and talent choices or gearing might change in the upcoming weeks. Frost Death Knights have one standard build, which gives the best damage output for PvP. The standard build looks like this, but some talents can be swapped depending on what you face. This standard build provides the most damage output since it allows you to use your burst frequently and keep up as much pressure as possible. The best pick in this tier is Cold Heart. Every 2 seconds you gain a stack of Cold Heart that makes your next Chains of Ice do damage stacking up to 20 times. When this is fully stacked, it can be used as burst and since you want to keep Chains of Ice on your kill target anyway, this talent offers the most damage output. Icy Talons is an alternative pick that could be used instead of Cold Heart. Icy Talons offer slightly more damage when you have full uptime on a target. For example versus Shadow Priests or Melee Cleaves where keeping uptime will be easy. Cold Heart remains the best pick overall when facing teams where you will struggle to connect. The best pick in this tier is Runic Attenuation. Runic Attenuation has a chance to grant you free runes on auto attacks. Since as Frost you will be rune starved most of the time, the standard will give the most value in this tier. Horn of Winter has a too long cooldown and offers only a small amount of runic power and 2 runes on a 45 second cooldown. Murderous Efficiency has slightly less value in giving runes back over runic attenuation. The best pick for PvP in this tier is Asphyxiate. Asphyxiate can be used to start a CC chain and a CC chain or it can be used to execute a swap onto another target. Blinding Sleet can be used instead of Asphyxiate when you already have a lot of stuns on your team. For example when you play with a rogue. It can also be used to save your teammates by blinding the enemy team. For example to peel for your healer when he's being trained. The best pick in this tier is Frozen Pulse. Frozen Pulse offers a lot of damage over time, since you will always have less than 3 runes, so the standard will have 100% uptime. It also does the most damage in this tier. Frost Scythe could be picked in a PV environment to increase your AoE burst damage. The best pick in this tier is our new defensive cooldown Death Pact, and should be used versus teams that will train you. Death Pact heals you for 50% of your maximum health, but then places a healing absorption of 30% of your maximum health on you. Make sure that when you use Death Pact, that you have some Death Strikes ready to use, or that your healer can top you. Revwalk can be used if you won't be the kill target. Revwalk offers you some extra mobility against teams where you will struggle to connect onto the kill target, for example versus a mage team. The best pick in this tier is Gathering Storm. Gathering Storm offers the most stable damage and you want to keep Remorse's Winter up as much as possible, which is why this talent works really well, since it will increase the damage and duration of Remorse's Winter. In PvE situations, you could pick Glacial Advance instead, since it will replace your Frost Strike ability in the rotation and offer more damage output. The best pick in this tier is Ice Cap. Ice Cap is the best talent in this row because it reduces the cooldown of your Pillow of Frost by just following your rotation, allowing you to burst more often. The other talents are not worth taking because Ice Cap will offer you more burst and damage output. In BFA, you can now pick 3 on the talents and choose between playing Trinket, Adaptation or Relentless. As a DK, playing Trinket is always the safest option because you will have to rotate cooldowns and Trinkets with your team. If your healer calls to use a defensive cooldown, you can use your trinket to save yourself, which would not be the case with Relentless or Adaptation. For PvP talents, you should always pick one of the auras. Necrotic Aura gives you and your team 8% increased magic damage and works really well when you play with a caster on your team. Decomposing Aura works really well versus melee cleaves or when playing with another melee to reduce the enemy team's health by 15%.
Hard stop aura should be used versus mobile targets, for example versus mages and hunters, to help you and your team connect onto the kill target by increasing the cooldown of their abilities. The best PvP talent is overpowered room weapon, and should be used in almost every situation. The talent makes your hungering room weapon a 1 minute cooldown, but reduces the duration by 10 seconds, allowing you to burst more often. Delirium is used combined with Heartstop Aura versus mobile targets, for example mages and hunters, to help you and your team connect by increasing the cooldown of movement enhancing abilities, for example sprint, blink or disengage. Frozen Center gives you a root when you use Remorseless Winter for the first time, which works really well with any melee cleave or when playing with a caster that does not have any roots. This talent can be picked instead of Delirium if you know you will have uptime on the target. Anti-Magic Zone can be used for the spell cleaves to have an extra defensive cooldown for you and your team. Dark Simulacrum can be used when you don't need a root, extra defensive cooldown or delirium. Dark Simulacrum can be used to steal defensive cooldowns like Pain Suppression, Ice Block or Divine Shield. Or it can be used offensively to steal CC like Cyclone, Polymorph or other crown control like Hammer of Justice. The standard build includes one of the three auras, overpowered room weapon, and frozen center or anti-magic zone. The only time where you would not use overpowered room weapon is when you have to run delirium and hard stop aura to have uptime on a target, for example a mage or a hunter. Since these classes would generate more pressure since you can't stay connected on them, you will most likely have to use another defensive pvp talent like anti-magic zone as third option instead. Frost Death Knights have 3 strong traits which stand out from the rest. First is Glacial Contagion, which gives your auto attacks a chance to apply Glacial Contagion, dealing frost damage over 14 seconds. Obliterate deals additional damage to targets with Glacial Contagion active. This trait increases your single target pressure and is therefore considered the best trait. Second is Echoing Hole. When empowered by Rhyme, Howling Blast causes a secondary burst of icy wind around you that deals frost damage to nearby enemies. This trait increases your damage on every rain proc, which makes it a good trait. And last is Icy Citadel. When Pillar of Frost expires, your strength is increased for 6 seconds. This effect lasts 2 seconds longer for each obliterate and frost scythe critical strike during Pillar of Frost. Another good trait that will increase your damage even after your burst. It also lines up with the Ice Cat talent to increase your damage after every Pillar of Frost. Since Pillar of Frost will have reduced cooldown because of Ice Cap, this trait will proc more often. Many classes benefit from stacking Azerite traits to increase their damage or healing. For Frost DK, the best scenario is to have one of each trait, since all the traits combined offer the most damage output. Every gear piece will have strength on it, which is the main stat for most melee DPS. After this, the priority list looks like this. Versatility, Mastery, Haste, Critical Strike. Versatility increases your baseline damage from all abilities and increases the healing of your death strike, making you more tanky. Mastery increases your frost damage of all abilities and should be stacked together with versatility. Haste could be used instead of versatility or mastery to decrease the cooldown of your runes. However, this offers lower overall damage and because of how frost works now, you want to use your runes as fast as possible for the most damage output, making haste one of the lesser stats. Critical strike offers nothing for frost since you want to have stable burst damage and the value of versatility or mastery is a lot better over critical strike. When looking at gear, you should aim to have versatility and mastery on every gear piece, preferably more versatility than mastery if possible. For your enchants, you want to have enchant ring packed to versatility, which increases your versatility by 37 on your rings. DKs don't use normal enchants on their weapons and we use a class specific rune on their weapon instead, which will be rune of the fallen crusader on your main hand, and Rune of Razor Eyes on your offhand. For trinket choices, there are two trinkets which will further increase your damage in PvP. First is Crowlock's Claw. It gives baseline versatility, which increases your baseline damage by about 2% and has a chance to grant you a large amount of strength for 10 seconds. Second is Dread Gladiator's Badge, 
which gives you more baseline versatility and increases your strength for 15 seconds when used on a 2 minute cooldown. Each faction offers different racials that are good for Frost Death Knights. For Alliance, Human is the best pick since it gives you an extra trinket from the racial ability every man for himself. Even though this can only be used on stuns, it can save games by using it to get out of stuns to use a defensive cooldown for yourself or your partners. Human also has 2% extra on secondary stats, which means 2% extra versatility, haste, mastery and critical strike from the human spirit ratio. For Horde, Orc is the best pick because of multiple reasons. First is Hardiness, which reduces the duration of stuns on any Orc by 20%, making it appealing to most PvP players. And second is Blood Fury, which can be used together with your burst abilities to increase your attack power for 15 seconds. Human is good versus teams where you will have to play defensive. Orc is better versus teams where you can play aggressive to finish the game. Frost Death Knight's playstyle remains the same and you will spend the majority of the game setting up your burst and quickly bursting your target down with your team. Frost DK does not have a single target or a rotation. Since all abilities do AoE damage, you only have to follow one rotation. Keep Chains of Ice active on the target. Keep Remorse's Winter up. And use Obliterate and Howling Blast to generate runic power. Use any procs you get from Rhyme and Killing Machine instantly to generate new procs. And dump your runic power on Frost Strike. To quickly burst the target down, you will have to use your cooldowns, racials and trinkets together to create a short burst window and eventually score a kill. Use Pillow of Frost and Hungering Room Weapon and resume your normal rotation. To get the most out of your burst, Try to line up any trinkets or racials for when your cooldowns are ready. As a Frost DK, your ideal opener is to have Chains of Ice on the target before you connect. Use Howling Blast while you try to connect to the target to start generating runic power. Once you connect, use Formosa's Winter and start your rotation or start your burst depending on the situation. Pick your talents based on what setup you face, but try to use overpowered room weapon in almost every situation. Look for gear with versatility and mastery on it, get enchants that have versatility, and try to get one of each Azerite trait. One Glacial Contagion trait, one Echoing Hall trait, and one Icy Citadel trait. That's gonna be it for this guide guys, please let me know what you think in the comments, and leave a plus call if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.